but I think it's here to stay, so I'm gonna show you guys. Welcome to episode three of Mosaic Madness. If you have not watched the previous two episodes, please go do that. This series is best watched in chronological order, and I will put the cards here so you can start watching the Mosaic Madness playlist. But that way you know what we're working on, what projects we've completed, and where we're sitting for Mosaic Madness. To be honest, I'm stressed. We're very, very behind. So this weekend is probably gonna be a lot of building, not so much of me talking. You're gonna get a lot of build shots because we're just gonna see how much we can finish this weekend. And I wanna focus on building and taking you guys with me, but filming's not gonna be my like top priority. So if you wanna see some cool builds, maybe not hear me blab my mouth so much, keep watching. <laughs> So since this Mosaic Madness is all about trying new techniques and trying new things, I figured why not try painting on the actual mosaic backer and then building the mosaic around the paintings. So here I'm painting some wildflower florals with a very warm color palette just to accent some of the light and warm wood I'm going to be using in this mosaic. I feel like the flowers and having the three separate diamonds could feel like a lot going on, but having this painted onto the backer will help inset it a little bit from the frame, and I think that will help give it a more subdued look, even though these are wild flowers, I still wanted it to be light and simple for the final piece. So let me know what you think of this completed mosaic. last night I was filming making it which I'm sure you probably saw before this but we have the white woodburn diamond finally finished I think it turned out so so pretty there we go now it's focusing but this is gonna be on the light side of the bracket even though the burn is dark background is white I'm imagining a ton of just like natural and light wood so that's gonna be on the light side and then I finished painting the arch piece, so let's 
get some focus here. So just light flowers, like a light white and kind of like creamy yellow look to it. And then also like a creamy orangey beige background. So I wanted the middles to pop a lot, but again to the mosaic itself is gonna be a lot of white, a lot of like wood. So focal point is really gonna be those diamonds in the front. I'm happy with both of them. I am going to seal them this morning first thing so we can start building them probably this afternoon once the seal dries. And we need to go downstairs and finish the sunflower burn mosaic, which I know you guys have been waiting on. So let's not waste any time. Let's go do that right now. So I wanted to try a different frame technique for the painted arch. I wasn't sure I was gonna love it, so I didn't film it but I think it's here to stay, so I'm gonna show you guys the frame now. All right, so instead of doing a light pine, which I was considering, I'm gonna use the same cherry piece that I cut for the white rose burn piece. I think it's gonna look really, really pretty with that color background, so it just kinda worked out that the piece fit, and honestly, I had just enough of that width to create this frame, so yeah, we're gonna stay with that, and build out around it and see what we think. finishing the sunflower burn piece. This piece has been long awaited by I feel like anyone who has seen me work on it. It turned out so freaking beautiful. I can't wait for you guys to see the finished product in the next video. You'll see a lot of it here right now but basically the steps were to paint the background and then I had to get all the MDF pieces spaced perfectly with my little spacers and glue them on to the backer. A trick I found to help keep these pieces 
stuck onto the backer is doing the wood glue, but then also surrounding it with some super glue. This helps it stick immediately to the backer and I don't have to use pin nails, which could ruin the very flat, very matte finish I have going on on this piece. So definitely using Loctite helps a ton. All right, down in the shop, just cut the pieces for the white diamond burn piece. I need to go in and sand all of them to give them a round over because it's basically like all one color right now. I used the same board, but I really like the effect of it. It's clean, it's light, so we're gonna keep it as is. Um, I'll show you guys here in a second and then we'll go into sanding. cut as I just showed you. So I have to paint all the MDF pieces. They're going to be white just like the white uh, rose burn piece. So I'm going to take those off. We're going to sand them and then get to painting. Hi friends. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning. Uh, woke up, read a little bit, hung out with Moose. Now it's time to get to work. So we cut all the MDF pieces for that arch piece that you watched me work on yesterday. So I'm gonna spend the morning just sanding and painting those um, while I wake up a little bit. I think I've talked about this before, but I don't love the sound of power tools at like 6, 7 a.m. Um, so I'm just gonna work on these first and then get down into the shop. pieces are painted so we are down in the shop now for the day um so i just finished the last pieces of the sunflower burn there was a few pieces that i didn't like the finish on so i repainted and sprayed them um, so that is all attached and ready to be cut down white pieces should hopefully be attached by the end of the day so today is going to be all about cutting pieces for multiple small mosaics these aren't going to have the like painted or wood burned inlays like the mosaics you've seen currently um but normally mosaic madness is not that this is a new twist that i'm putting on it this year so i'm excited to create just some like normal mosaics as well and again gonna continue the theme of the dark and light so um let's just see what we can get knocked out today we're gonna spend a lot of hours just cutting and getting things ready 
and then probably work on painting pieces or anything like that later tonight. So let's get to it. pieces are painted and sanded um, I'm gonna put the flat mat on the wood pieces that I just sanded with pieces like the hexagon piece when I'm building in the middle I find it's easier for me to go ahead and just attach the pieces I do have as I'm working and it makes it a little bit easier and gets the pieces tighter when I have it secured so I'm gonna go ahead and seal and secure what I have and then continue to build this one. So for me, I really, really have to take the time to think about what I'm working on. And maybe this just doesn't come naturally to me, but I really have to think about what am I working on this week? What can I do while certain things are drying? And sometimes to me, it feels like I'm bouncing like all over the place. But honestly, I think it's the easiest way I can get multiple projects done at once. So say if I don't finish a lot of projects one week, normally the next week I'm finishing like five, six, seven because all of those have been like in progress and at different stages. And they do all have different various stages, whether it's painting, sanding, priming, assembling, gluing up. So it's kind of like a mental thing where I have to just stay organized. Um, normally for me, it's like, somewhere in the shop where I can see it. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm working on like these three projects. Time for me to get back to this one. So that's kind of what's going on in my brain right now as we're moving things along. But I'm gonna seal and then attach the hexagon and then move from the light hexagon and we're gonna make a walnut and black hexagon that's gonna kind of mirror and match it. So as some things were drying downstairs, I decided to come back upstairs. There is a piece I need to draw a scroll saw template for. So I'm gonna work on drawing that on my iPad now while those pieces are drying. I'm honestly not 100% sure what I want the inside to look like. So it might be a little bit of trial and error to just figure out what the heck I'm gonna be drawing on here? Because, uh, I'll be honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> template lines marked to go with the grain so we can create like an intarsia effect and then I have my walnut separated into lighter shades of walnut and darker shades so I'm going to do the petals in darker shades and the flowers the little um like inserts not the little inserts the little centers lighter the leaves lighter 
Um, and I'm not sure about these little guys yet. We'll see what makes sense. Probably darker. I don't know, but have that all mopped out. So I'm gonna cut the pieces and then get them attached to the walnut slice. One thing I also say about the whole shaping process is it does take time. So any projects that have shaped flowers, anything like that are always gonna be more expensive. Um, I'm about an hour, a little over an hour in and I'll show you what I have done. Um, and I'm only using the first bit so far. So I have like another bit to go through plus hand sanding and I'm not even done all the petals yet. So. This is definitely going to be a more expensive piece, but I'll show you what it looks like right now. So as I showed, I'm currently using the core skirt right now. I might actually switch this um, to um, either the cylinder or something that's a little bit thicker that doesn't have the point. I always forget that I don't want to use the course to detail, so honestly I'm probably not going to use this one much. But I do like the cylinder and I do really like the ball nose tip as well. So if you're thinking about getting any saber tooth birds, those are personally my favorite. Um, but the core skirt has gotten me here. So you can see I got the whole flower of this one done, the leaves done, and I started on this flower and that took me an hour. <laughs> so we got some work to do for sure. I needed to take a little back stretch it's almost lunchtime, but I would like to at least get all of these shaped before I take a lunch, eat a salad, and then come back down and probably do the other bit. But I think it looks really pretty so far. This piece really did take so long to sand and really just get it in a spot to be ready to attach to the backer. I'm so happy I took the time to really put a lot of effort into this piece because it finished beautifully, but man, did it take a lot of sanding. I think that's one thing people don't realize about handmade pieces is really how long it takes what I show on social media is not the hours of grueling work that goes into a piece, so I'm happy to just share a glimpse of it with you guys here and appreciate you taking the time to honor my pieces and watching them be made. All right, 
everything is sanded so let's quickly get a first coat of oil on these flowers we're gonna let it sit a little bit and then probably do a second coat before we attach to the mosaic we're getting there only took me all day <laughs> So just placed the black diamond flower. I'll show you some close-ups here in a second. But I feel like it's missing something and that's one thing when like drawing to making it into a reality. It's like sometimes you just have to go with your gut and know when something's missing or when something is too much and take it away. But I definitely feel like something's missing from this and I think what I'm gonna do I'll just turn you around so you can see while I'm talking. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, centered in the diamond like I was planning, but I feel like with the matte black backer, it just kind of gets lost. It's not taking up the full area. So without getting close and seeing the diamond inlay, um, just kind of gets swallowed up. So what I'm thinking is taking, and it's not gonna be this piece, but a piece similar and just kind of outlining that diamond with like a thin walnut piece I think that will help break it up but then still keep it like very simple and dark so that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do and it should work since all of these pieces are relatively the same height but yeah just needs needs to break up a little bit together sometimes takes an hour or so in itself but I could not be more excited about this piece I really feel like I challenge myself one with shaping trying a new technique like getting the intarsia and the grain to go together and just playing with something new so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for this video we still have a few more episodes of mosaic madness so don't you worry but it is live now so make sure you check out our website and see the pieces that are still available thanks for hanging out with me again and I will see you guys in the next video bye